Good morning. The Security Council is going to meet this morning to talk about uh, the latest mandate from the Taliban in Afghanistan uh, banning women from participating in UN humanitarian delivery. It's an appalling thing. Two out of three Afghans depend on humanitarian aid. Uh, and the UN could not and should not have to depend on being able to deliver aid effectively without women. And more importantly, I think it shows us again that the Taliban is placing medieval misogyny above humanitarian need uh, in Afghanistan. So we'll uh, look forward to those further discussions this morning. Ambassador, can we ask you about the Middle East uh, situation as well? Um, as you've seen, uh, the situation seems to be getting worse and more tense. Yeah. Is it time for the Security Council to send us a strong message to Prime Minister Netanyahu about the violence that's happened at Al-Aqsa Mosque? Well, you'll have seen that the Foreign Secretary this morning has described the events uh, there as appalling and shocking, and we are gravely concerned about the escalation in violence. Uh, we're concerned both about uh, the Israeli security forces, uh, use of force, disproportionate use of force, and not allowing the wounded to receive treatment. At the same time, uh, we're also concerned by the rockets being fired from uh, Gaza and escalating the tensions. So really the priority is for, I think, both sides to de-escalate tensions, particularly at this very sensitive time for uh, religion. And we'll see where we get to in our council discussions. Uh, but I do think the most important thing is that we see a de-escalation of tensions, and I think the Security Council will want to contribute to that. Back to the ban in Afghanistan, what can we expect from the Security Council? There have been statements before, this is what the UN is calling an escalation, because we've seen what the Taliban has decided as it relates to girls going to school, to universities. Uh, there have been statements, statements from this council that essentially have been ignored to date. So what can this council deliver on this in, in terms of impact on the ground? No, I think you're right. I mean, the 18 months since the Taliban uh, took Kabul, we have seen uh, a sustained campaign to take women out of life in Afghanistan. Um, you've mentioned the primary schools, universities, being able to walk in the parks, participating in NGO delivery, and these rather uh, egregious examples of humanitarian aid, healthcare, for example, being delivered to men that to pass on to women. Uh, so the council will continue uh, to try and get a clear picture of events to work through uh, the UNAMA and uh, the SRSG as well, but we do need to keep the pressure on the Taliban to prevent them excluding half of Afghan's po Afghanistan's population from uh, life, not just public life, but from life altogether. You know, Ma, um, has said it before, and you just talked about the pressure, but the Taliban are seeking recognition. Do you think that would be something that the council or your country would consider in the uh, near future? I think it would be very hard to uh, recognize the Taliban as a government over the whole of Afghanistan. They are excluding women uh, from society in general, and that's not, a, uh, that's not an acceptable first stepping stone uh, for recognition. But I know that recognition is important to the Taliban, and when we have the meeting uh, later this month of the special envoys, we hope to find uh, a way through so that we can talk to the Taliban about ways in which uh, steps they would need to take uh, in order to uh, move towards uh, recognition. But we have to get humanitarian aid in. We have to get women playing a role in society again to help that. Will the UK reconsider its aid funding for Afghanistan over this? Will you decide, will you, might you cut some funding? We have already uh, cut our funding to Afghanistan, but we are uh, very caught because, as I said, two out of three people in Afghanistan are desperately dependent on humanitarian aid. Uh, so we are trying to fulfill that need, working with partners, um, at the same time as making sure that we do not uh, give anything that would give the Taliban reason to think that they can carry on uh, in this medieval way. So it begs the question then, Ambassador, what does pressure look like? If aid shouldn't be withdrawn, right, given the need that we, we know to be on the ground, what then must be done? What does pressure really look like? So I think, as always, pressure will come in a variety of ways, and you know, the Security Council has a role to play. We've seen uh, extensive discussions in the General Assembly as well. This is a question that is burning for uh, the majority of members of the United Nations here. And then there are key regional players, the neighbors around Afghanistan, and the strategy needs to be put together uh, to try and turn around this situation. Thanks very much indeed.